what we're doing is we're building a system which allows for essentially you to be simultaneously staked and delegated. And such that when you're staked, you'll also be earning the flare drops. Welcome to the DeFi Standard, and this is Mickey B. Fresh. So we have Flare rolling out phase one of the new staking on the Flare network. And before we dive into that, I want to give everyone a little backstory about why I haven't covered Flare in the last few months. So Flare is in beta, and we're about to come out of beta phase. And we knew this for six to nine months would be beta. And I saw in March, April, that we we're going to come into a slowdown with Flare. And until the F assets were announced and layer cake and staking, that's when we'll see the ramp up. And at the same time, it was a critical period for the XRP community. I run an FTSO on Songbird and Flare since last fall. And the FTSOs have been on Flare since the end of last summer, fall. And I also run a validator on Flare. So I have a vested interest in the network. I was the first one producing content on Flare. I'm going to continue covering it. But I felt like we were at a critical juncture with the XRP community and the case coming to a close at any day in the last few months. And so much development happening around and change coming to a 10-year-old blockchain and a community that has been embroiled in this SEC case for three years. And in my opinion, not to their fault, but the fault of the SEC has caused the community to lag and occupied with this case. But now that's over and we have multiple different opportunities where XRP is going to be used at the network layer with the AMMs. The EVM sidechain, we could stake XRP. The hook sidechain, where transactions of hooks are going to burn XRP. There's going to be a decentralized stable coin where you can use XRP as collateral to mint a decentralized XRP backed stable coin. There'll be a ton of different applications. You'll have smart accounts. Then you have the Futureverse, which is a massive partnership with Ripple and a roll up of 11 companies to create open metaverse based on substrate, EVM smart contracts, and is directly integrated with the XRPL AMM. And it uses XRP as its base token for rewards and every transaction fee and gas is swapped into XRP and rewarded to validators. Every asset will be paired to XRP. So that's a critical network, root network that's about to launch. And then we have the AMMs which the amendment's about to be proposed any week now. So all four of those things are huge. They're all built and ready to launch in the next, likely by the end of the year. Now, they're all not necessarily connected to each other, so they could overlap with each other. And I felt like we needed to level up. And the and Flare Network will add the fifth piece, which is FXRP, which is going to allow anyone to mint FXRP with their XRP to bring to Flare to earn from the cross-chain incentive pool and then deploy that FXRP in a DeFi ecosystem and in the collateral pools on Flare. Now, with Flare, we're going to cover F assets and layer cake more often. And I know everyone who's in Flare is in XRP, and, and that's the audience who watches my channel. And it still is a priority because of the immense changes that are coming to the XRP community and around the ledger. Inching towards that final phase of beta with the three phases of staking and validators moving to the P chain. Staking phase one, which is going to be critical and super important for the success 
of the network. And I'm going to play some clips from the Twitter spaces with Hugo Filion from Friday and Flare Community. And I thought there were some really important parts in there that you need to listen to that Hugo will explain better than me. And I'll try to break it down afterwards, but this is going to be a, an overview. So Flare staking will commence in three phases, and it has begun on July 5th. And by the end of the third quarter, going into Q4, everyone will be able to delegate their FLR to validators. Okay, so staking is where we're moving the FTSOs to be the validators of the network. Um, so in order to be, uh, uh, in order to be a FTSO that is rewarded, uh, you will have to run a validator, um, and so essentially, the, the, there's a there's specific reward for validation, but you wouldn't get that reward unless you're also running an FTSO. So essentially, combining the FTSO and the validator role. Um, in order to do that, we need to have uh, people staking to the FTSOs beyond delegation, because uh, staking is. Uh, uh, Staking supplies essentially security to the network. In order to stake, you need to stake on a, a different chain. So the the chain everyone's currently using is the is the C chain. Staking actually takes place on what's known as the P chain. Um, so we'll be, I guess, releasing a lot more information about the economics behind that and all that. Uh, it doesn't change the high level economics of Flare at all. Um, so there's no f more tokens minted. There's no less tokens minted. It, it's it's completely within the existing economic scheme. What it's going to do is it's going to move a little bit of the reward for the FTSO. It's going to shift a bit of that towards staking. Um, so it's ultimately, you know, but staking will be available for everyone. Um, and it's just a question of, you know, how much do you want to stake versus, you know, stake is locked, but it has a, you know, a potentially a much higher reward for the, than the FTSO. Um, so stake is, is, is locked, but that, that, that locked amount is also mirrored in the FTSO, um, contract so that the, the validator and the FTSO, which are combined, uh, maintain their, uh, essentially their vote power in the FTSO. Um, but it, people will have to decide, okay, I want to stake and I want to stake for three months. Uh, once you've staked for three months, that's locked, or I want to delegate, which is, uh, as, as everyone knows, liquid. Um, and so the far, far less, you know, there's much less risk at play because it's, it's immediately liquid. You can do whatever you want with the tokens. Um, and we're aiming to have about 35% of the tokens staked with the, with the remaining 65%, you know, totally liquid. The, and can staking and delegation be achieved simultaneously or are on these, are these on two different chains? What we're doing is we're building a, a system to allow uh, essentially, all of the information from the P chain to come to the C chain again through the state connector, um, which allows for essentially you to be simultaneously staked and delegated. And such that when you're staked, you'll also be earning the flare drops. So the network initially started with a closed set of 20 professional validators. Uh, which will over time be gradually replaced by infrastructure providers. And I believe that process has already started to help decentralize the network, right? Um, are there any plans to accommodate for more than 20 validators? And if so, is there going to be a hard cap for the amount of total validators or are you just sticking to 20? Oh, absolutely. We want to have as many validators as possible. I think, you know, the first uh, place to get to would be 100 such that it perfectly mirrors the FTSO set. So you're ideally hoping that all of the signal providers are eventually migrate and sort of evolve into this infrastructure provider role. Well, well, ultimately, they will have to in order to earn rewards from the FTSO system. Flare Foundation is targeting roughly 35% of FLR to be staked. Now, there will be no change in tokenomics. So no new tokens will be minted. There will be no high-level change. But According to Hugo in Twitter Spaces with Flare Community, he did say, and he has said this in the past, that validator rewards would be higher than FTSO rewards. So right now, the inflation rate for the first year is 10%. That's broken down 7% to FTSO, 2% to 
to validators, 1% to attestation providers. Since the validators are FTSOs and FTSOs have to be validators and vice versa, they're binded together. Which allows for essentially you to be simultaneously staked and delegated. And such that when you're staked, you'll also be earning the flare drops. So a delegator could technically just delegate, but the validators and FTSOs become one. And this adds to the security of the network. So we are in beta and we're still in beta, but staking will commence and that will be us exiting beta. The network will be decentralized and passed off to the 60 to 100 FTSOs that will also be validators. So now these entities are infrastructure providers. They have been submitting data for almost a year. They're known to the community now. So unlike a pure proof of stake model where you just, if you have a lot of tokens, you could just put up stake and be a validator on the network. With this, it's a higher barrier. And those entities that acted maliciously were chilled by the FTSO committee and they will not receive the initial stake of 10 million flare to be able to minimum to be a validator and earn therefore FTSO rewards. You will not be able to earn FTSO rewards if you're not a validator. And when beta is over. Now, this means that validator rewards are gonna be significantly higher. So they're gonna probably, most likely this will be through a governance vote where the ratio will, this is a reward service. So every, if it's a rewards pool, so say the F asset incentive pool, say it'd be the inflation that comes out every uh, month and it's authorized, they could be broken off into up to 10 different services. So there's three right now, and that could be adjusted, even though the inflation rate is the same, where it's distributed to and how it's directed can be voted at any time to go to a different direction. And it's a priority for validator staking because that's securing the network. Now, FTSOs decide on the price that they select based on what they feel the weighting should be from the different exchanges around the crypto market. And everyone's pretty much doing that. So if you're doing that, you're not not everyone's earning the same though so it's kind of unfair the way that system is set up so it makes more sense to push the rewards to the validators where the security is going to be embedded so as long as everyone's producing data that's from major exchanges and is uptime and is secure it's everyone's trying to get to a shelling point there is no right price so i know it's been difficult for delegators to choose who do you choose to so this will make it much easier because there'll be less emphasis on everyone trying to just follow each other to the single price where now validator rewards will include FTSO rewards and you will get staking rewards. So staking, FTSO, and also flare drops. But this is something that was not mentioned in the Twitter spaces that I heard, and I re-listened to it twice, and I haven't heard it mentioned anywhere really yet, but it's on the second page, first page of the white paper 2.0. And this is very important, like huge. And this community might not realize it right away, but anyone who's familiar with Ethereum and any other community that has proof of stake knows how important the liquid staking token is most networks i think almost all networks the dApps DAOs, issue them and there's different versions of them so on solana you'll see different types of staked soul on ethereum there's different types of staked eth now with the flare network they say and this is the new white paper 2.0 version flare network and the flr token Flare uses proof of stake, so both 
FLR and FLR's liquid staking token can be used as collateral within applications as well as for governance purposes. So let me repeat that. Flare, FLR, and FLR's liquid staking token can be used as collateral. So not everyone might be familiar with that. What is a liquid staking token? So if you deposited or staked your Flare or WFLR with a validator, now you would think, oh, wow, I locked up my asset. My capital is locked up. But it's actually not because you'll receive a liquid staking token that represents your claim for the asset. You could think of it like how there's liquidity tokens that represent two assets in a pool, but instead of two assets, it's a one-to-one. -one. Now, we don't know, it doesn't say in here, but it seems like to me that the network is going to guarantee the redeemability. Now, if that's the case, and this is at the network layer, and I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, it literally says just that. That's all we got. Um, that would be fantastic because you know that you could, no matter what, under any circumstance or condition, you can redeem to get back your FLR. And that means that liquid flare token now has a market. Now you don't have five different staked liquid uh, FLRs because that could get fragmented too. But the reason why I think it's issued by the network is because of the sentence afterwards. It says, as well as for governance purposes. So it means the liquid staking token can be used as collateral within applications as well as for governance purposes. So what application would be ideal here? So I'm just going to just paint a picture here of how many things you could earn at once. But it's it's the most important one that this is what the tokenomics and the mechanism design of FLR is all about. And ultimately, it's to earn revenue and fees and not to sacrifice that opportunity cost that comes with staking and delegating on a network because that's where most proof of stake has a problem. The Flare network is not a product. It's an infrastructure decentralized network that's run by nobody. Now they built it and the foundation is overseeing it as it comes out of beta. The validators will truly be a fully decentralized network and have built in governance. It has run flawlessly. They have done everything they said they've done. We're going to do and more. And layer cake is there's some documentation out on it. But it's that's theirs. It's going to have Flare at the heart of it, and it's going to use it as a hub, but it's going to connect to other networks. The F asset system, as we know, is going to be a collateral system. It's going to use Flare as the insurance. So it's not going to be the primary collateral to start. It's going to be multi-collateral, use stable coins, and use Flare. It'll have to have at least 150% Flare. So it's still going to use a significant amount of FLR. It will need to be locked up which is great, and that's what we need. So the economy of Flare and the ecosystem, and what have I been saying? The storage demand, just like FaxRP, which doesn't really have any right now, besides that it's been in existence for over a decade, and people are holding it, hoping the price will go up. But as it's used more to earn yield, real yield, which Flare will be too, to earn fees from people minting, that will draw and staking rewards, that will drive storage demand. So it locks up the asset and it drives more people in. We're also in a bear market still. And as things pick up, they're building for a future from a year from now, two years. Everybody is building that way. Everybody in crypto. They're not building for right now's price pump. Oh, we gotta move the price and oh, the chart. Like, this is a whole new economy and a whole new market. Like the charts are great, but they're like a small piece of this whole thing. And as there's demand, and as we see new 
economic models develop, they're going to be less and less, less relevant because the fundamentals will take over. The Flare Network is transitioning to a staking model, and the objective is to decentralize the validators from the currently closed set of 20 professional validators and further secure the data provisioning protocols. So this, the rollout of staking will be in three phases. There's no change in tokenomics. So the inflation rate is 10%. 7%, 70% of the 10% goes to FTSO rewards currently. 20% of that 10% goes to validators. And that's split between the infrastructure, the professional ones, and the virtual validators. And then 1% goes to the attestation providers, which I don't believe are earning rewards yet, but that builds up as a monthly thing. Now, going by what Hugo said, it looks like validator rewards are going to be definitely earning more than FTSO rewards, which I completely agree with and makes complete sense. Because Flare is built on Avalanche's architecture. And it's important to understand this, and they say this in the blog. Flare consists of three chains. The C chain, which is the Ethereum virtual machine chain, which we all are using right now. But the P chain is where the validators are. Now there'll be no staking on Songbird. This is Flare only. So I saw somebody asked, I think in the Twitter spaces, they might even ask twice, well, what about Songbird? Why aren't you putting on Songbird? Well, because there's a P chain. There's one chain for staking and that'll be Flare. And we'll find out more what's going on with Songbird and how that's aligned in the architecture. I'm not going to get into that right now. I have my speculation, which I'm pretty sure about, but it's not, it's not important right now. And the foundation is overseeing it. As it comes out of beta, the validators will tr- it'll be a fully decentralized network. It says things are going to change. So one thing you could guarantee is change, is a development, an explosion in the ecosystem around Flare. But it's a young blockchain. It's early. And it's only been in beta. We haven't even come out of beta yet. So understand that. Understand Flare Foundation and those who built the network are not a marketing team. They communicated more than well enough to what you had to do. When it came to delegating, to receiving flare drops, and everything that we had to do to earn and participate, everybody got the information. And as the bridges are built, and then the dApps and the new and the blue chip assets and stable coins are brought over, you will see the dApps then spin up as the F assets launch and the collateral system. And you'll see some probably crossover between projects in XRP Ledger, like Xpector, for example, and you'll see others that will cross over. And I think that's good. I think it's healthy because we have this base foundation of a community and community is important. Community and liquidity. You have those two things early on and those are key. You know, I like the idea of having essentially all this liquidity from these bridges converging in one place because uh, when liquidity converges in one place uh, that's when people start building around okay well this liquidity is in one place well what else can I build around that liquidity but managing expectations expecting crazy price pumps in a bear market of a new blockchain is not realistic and understanding that you know, people throw out these words, mega inflation. That's just downright false because it's not accurate. The inflation rate is 10% of circulating supply. There's a distribution taking place for three years. That distribution is releasing tokens part of a total supply. When that distribution ends, it's over. So you have to look at this at at least a three year minimum because that's when. The distribution ends. When that ends, it's a hard cutoff. 